Welcome to Broken Entertainment. So it looks like Godzilla vs. Kong has done wonderful at the box office so far. And I have yet to actually watch it. I need to do a review on this channel. And like I said before, I'm not a big fan of the idea of the movie. I'm not a big Godzilla vs. King Kong person. I think the original movie was a bad concept. And I don't really like this one much either as a concept. But the director has come out and been supportive of the fans. And the director has made a movie from what we can tell so far, that isn't full of agenda and all this other crap that the rest of Hollywood is doing. So it's kind of nice that you could just go see maybe a monster movie and have fun. Um, I didn't watch the last trailer because I'm, I'm just not interested in the trailers at this point. This article is from Cosmic Book News, and it's going to draw some conclusions that I will disagree with. And I do want to point out that it's interesting that the legendary Godzilla movies seem to do better with each iteration, which is not normally what happens with a trilogy of movies, right? And is good news for fans of the legendary franchise because they want to do more monster movies. And as far as I know, they're going to end up losing the rights to Toho because Toho is going to start throwing MonsterVerse back up and they do plan to use other monsters they do plan to have all these movies connected there's rumored that there's going to be a Monarch HBO Max show and that's all good news for fans so according to the article Godzilla vs Kong box office destroys Wonder Woman 1984 which has been kind of the benchmark weirdly enough uh, recently of this this whatever weird world we're living in now the pandemic era or the post pandemic era or the almost post pandemic era whatever you want to call it uh, the Godzilla vs Kong box office is off to a huge start as it so far has absolutely destroyed that of Wonder Woman 1984 not only has it destroyed it over the same period of time it's just totally annihilated it completely and it's beat every other movie as well. Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong roared to a $122 million international opening. And it set a new benchmark for the biggest international box office debut by a Hollywood film during the pandemic era. While some DC shill fans think it is an unfair comparison, we can simply point to the fact that when Wonder Woman 84 was released in theaters... The movie theaters in China were not closed. Well, not only that, but it's not been that long since Wonder Woman 1984 come out, came out. I mean, let, look, let's be honest. You know, were the theaters open in the magical L.A. place, you know, in New York? N no, but they were open in the rest of the country. And this is talking about international, but still. And... Wonder Woman is a movie that the first movie did very well in China and in the international box office. I mean, the movie almost made a billion dollars. So, there's a big tank from Wonder Woman to Wonder Woman 1984. And that includes, if you count, the HBO Max viewership. The Wonder Woman 1984 box office absolutely tanked in China. Just like it did everywhere else, as Wonder Woman 1984 brought in around $45 million in China, half the total of the first Wonder Woman movie. For comparison, Godzilla vs. Kong opened in China with $70.34 million. More good news for GVK comes from, comes from it learned that the GVK Chinese box office topped the $66 million start of 2019's Godzilla King of the Monsters. Godzilla movies are a big deal over in various parts of Asia, China included. So to see this do well is not surprising. To see these movies do increasingly better is good news, like I said, for Legendary, because it would be easy for that market to say, no, you're doing it wrong, and just turn their back on it. But instead, they're drawing more people in with each release. 
And I think they're doing that here as well. Um, I'm a huge Godzilla fan. I've got a lot of the movies. I'm not going to say I've got all of them, but I've got a vast majority of them. And the TriStar one, as we, as all Godzilla fans know, was a, a total disaster. And the first Legendary movie I enjoyed, but it had some issues. I haven't seen the other one yet. I haven't seen Godzilla King of the Monsters. I'm more interested in that one than this one. But I think it's been a respectable outing. I do. Uh, they've treated the character with respect. They've treated the lore with respect, even though they've got their own lore. It fits within the overall character of Godzilla movies. And that's that's a critical thing to do. They didn't take it and turn it into some sort of wholly American thing and just kind of ruin everything related to it. <clears throat> like Tristar. Uh, so, as pointed out by a Twitter user, Wonder Woman 1984 is about to finish its box office run with only 45.9 million domestic haul. That's terrible. And when the international numbers are added, Wonder Woman 1984 only made 165.9 million, which is a fraction of what the original Wonder Woman made. I know, I know, pandemic, blah, blah, blah. It still did terrible on HBO Max as well. The reviews are bad. People didn't enjoy the movie, and you saw views drop off pretty quickly. It's actually the opposite of what I think you're going to see with the Snyder Cut when it's all said and done. Uh, something Godzilla vs. Kong will probably be within its first week or two. I, I mean, yeah, it's at $122 million international. It's, it's going to beat that in a week. Easy. So, and this is where we get some editorializing from the Cosmic Book News, because they can't help themselves. Um, you know, they point out that HBO Max paid Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot as if Wonder Woman 1984 made a billion dollars before it even came out. And that's that's... The Wonder Woman 84 is never going to make its money back now. It's that easy. It is now rumored that Patty Jenkins has been booted from Wonder Woman 3. Which is incredible if that happens. And honestly, I don't want her off the movie. I want her off the creative part of the movie. I want her to direct. I think she did a great job directing the first Wonder Woman movie. And a terrible job writing the second one. But if you look at the credits, if you look at who wrote what, the first Wonder Woman movie was written by three or four people, and none of them were named Patty Jenkins or Jeff Johns. And Wonder Woman 84 is written by Patty Jenkins and Jeff Johns. So, get those two off writing duties, put some people back in. I would say, put the writers back in from the first movie, let them write the third movie, let Patty Jenkins direct, because she did a good job there, and leave it but yeah if hbo max slash warner brothers knows what it's doing at all they need to get patty jenkins away from wonder woman in terms of creative control because that was a disaster and her big thing was oh we don't need to end these movies with big fight scenes well yeah, you kind of do <laughs> it's superhero movie okay at the end of the day People want to see superheroes punch bad guys. Like, you can have great plot leading up to that, but at the end of the day, you gotta end with a superhero beating somebody up. Okay? Just the way it goes. And if you don't want to do that, maybe don't write a superhero movie. She tried to do the same thing with the first one. I know there's a lot of people that don't like the fight in the first one, but at least it's a fight. And the second one, she just wraps her whip around a dude's ankle and, and he cries and leaves, basically. So, the, set, the ending to Wonder Woman 84 is awful. Maybe a little punching would have gone a long way. I mean, there was the standoff with Cheetah, but that was awful. <laughs> and lopsided as all hell. That wasn't even interesting. 
so, and then Warner Brothers has recently made an announcement that its 2022 slate of movies will first get released in theaters and not on HBO Max, which is a big deal, and I think shows that they're... I don't know if it really shows that that strategy failed as much as that they're hoping to not need it. Because HBO Max was trying to make money. Warner Brothers was trying to make money and get viewers at a time when it was very difficult to release anything in theaters. So rather than do what Disney did and hold on to movies for months. I mean, Black Widow, I forgot Black Widow was a thing practically. And it's finally going to be released in a couple months. I mean, just crazy. And then, you know, the Snyder Cut and Wonder Woman H84 have had fewer viewers, but uh, very good news for Godzilla, very good news for Legendary, and I think very good news for the fans. So if you like them, if you've seen the movie and you liked it, let me know in the comments. If you've seen the movie and you didn't like it, let me know in the comments. And uh, let me know what you think of uh, Wonder Woman 84 getting its ass beat by Godzilla. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you next time.